Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and welcome to our Westchester Weekly Update. Today is Tuesday, September 5th, 2023, and I'm here with Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins. We're both back from our various travels uh, to uh, start the fall season, which is a very busy season here in county government. Uh, in the next coming weeks, we'll be talking a little bit about the upcoming preparations for the 2024 budget. We're still about a month away from when some of that information will be given uh, publicly and to the Board of Legislators on our capital budget, and then shortly after that in November, our operating budget. But that leads us to the end of the year, which is always a very busy time in county government. We also have just completed uh, the summer season. There are different calendars that say the summer ends on September 21st or it ends you know, um, on the 1st of September, whatever it is, uh, it's back to school time. And that certainly tends to mean the fall has begun. But uh, we've completed a summer that's been very busy, and particularly uh, that this is the second year in a row in which we suspended bus fares on our Beeline bus system and also on our paratransit system. They have now resumed uh, collecting fares on those systems as of today, Tuesday, September 5th. Uh, we hope that that was a helpful uh, way to uh, deal with your wallet and pocketbook. If you use the bus system, we hope you had a chance to use the bus system. We're a little accustomed to it. Uh, we're going to have conversations and discuss whether we can do that again at the holiday season uh, as, again, uh, a promotional effort to get people to, to use the system. But it's the second largest system in the state of New York, and to have it fare-free for the second st straight summer, we think, is a very positive thing for Westchester residents. So we also um, now reach a point at which we normally will close uh, all of our, our water uh, facilities. We have four pools and two beaches, and we're going to mention just in a few minutes that uh, because of the hot weather, we're going to be able to keep our Glen Island Beach open. Uh, it gets a little difficult once you get into the fall season because we lose some of the summertime uh, employment, the part-time employment, lifeguards, things of that nature that we have during the summer that we don't have when we enter the fall. So it's a little harder for us to be able to keep open pools, but we will be keeping open a beach. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, Ken Jenkins is going to cover not only our parks update, but also information about the fact that September is Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month and that we have an event coming up this Friday at the Healing Garden. Uh, we have um, uh, a person that we want to recognize today. Uh, we're very proud of the work that she has done in the Department of Community Mental Health. Annette Peters Rivolo is with us here today. She is one of our heroes or heroines uh, of uh, Westchester County. We want you to meet the people in Westchester County that work for you and I and all of us together and have done uh, exceptional work. They don't get enough credit for what they do, and we're going to make sure that you have a chance to introduce uh, uh, Annette today and some others and congratulate them on the good work that they've done. We'll talk a little bit about what back to school means in terms of vaccinations. Uh, we'll have Assemblywoman Dana Levenberg join us today to give an update on some of the work that she's been doing. Um, and then, of course, aside from the parks update, we'll give you the latest update on uh, the status of migrant population here in Westchester County. Uh, the lead story is clearly the weather. It's, it's hot outside, if you haven't noticed it, as we're having this conversation, it's over 90 degrees outside, and we're expecting a very warm week ahead of us. We had those first two days of September that really felt like fall on Friday and Saturday. Well, that's behind us now, and we have uh, hot and humid weather ahead of us. So with this kind of extreme heat and humidity and the air temperatures that will be above 90 degrees, uh, certainly for today and tomorrow, our County Health Department is issuing a heat advisory. As humidity and temperatures rise, residents should avoid strenuous activity, drink lots of water, avoid alcohol and caffeine. I should have made the note about caffeine already. I've, I, I've broken that one already. And take precautions to prevent heat-related illness. This is good advice. This is the kind of advice we've had all of our lives. We remind you that these things will help dehydrate you if you have alcohol and caffeine and you go outside and you do particularly strenuous uh, uh, efforts beyond what you know your capabilities are. You have to pace yourself. Don't overdo it in the heat. If you do spend time outdoors, take breaks. Take it in an air-conditioned environment if you can. Drink lots of water. And during this heat wave, always remember to check in on your elderly neighbors and anybody in the, that's in your close proximity that might be ailing in some fashion. Heat stroke is a serious and life-threatening condition that claims many lives nationwide each year. There are symptoms that you can track, uh, hot, red, dry skin, shallow breathing, a rapid, weak pulse, confusion, anyone suffering from heat stroke needs to receive emergency medical treatment immediately, call 911. Don't delay. If you suspect it, uh, cool the overheated person while you're waiting for emergency help to arrive. Another concern during heat wave is heat exhaustion. Seniors, young children, people who are overweight, or those who have high blood pressure, people who work outside or in other hot environments are at risk for um, heat exhaustion. 
frequent breaks, drink lots of water, can help you prevent heat exhaustion. The signs, not dissimilar, headache, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, exhaustion, as well as cool, moist, pale or flushed skin. Anyone suffering from heat exhaustion should move out of the sun and apply cool, wet cloths to their skin. These are practical advice coming from our Department of Health, coming from your mom, who told you all these things when you were younger, told me when I was younger, stop drinking coffee in the hot day. And uh, the most important thing is that you be aware of the circumstances and the surroundings that you're in. Uh, we have uh, a terrific medical system here in Westchester County, uh, done by private sector medical facilities and urgent care centers. Uh, we have emergency services at the ready. Let's not use them. Let's use common sense and try to get us through this. It's a couple of days of hot weather. We haven't had too many of these this particular summer, but we have them every year at some point in time. So we'll have them in September uh, right now, and hopefully everybody will be ready for that. Glen Island Beach, in anticipation of these temperatures, will remain open today until 6.30, and it'll be open tomorrow, Wednesday, September 6th, from 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Now, you can't get into the park after 6. You need to be in there and then out by 6.30. We would normally have closed the beach uh, at the end of uh, Labor Day, but we're going to keep it open again today until 6.30, tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 6.30 so that if you have the ability to go down and cool off at Glen Island Beach, it's, it's, it's our largest beach, it's in the city of New Rochelle, uh, right uh, on the border near Pelham and Mount Vernon and Larchmont and all in close proximity. Um, parking fees will not be collected at this time, but admission fees apply as well as Westchester County residency in order to access Glen Island. It's located at Wayman Avenue, New Rochelle. Uh, you can find directions uh, very easily online, and uh, we invite you to join us there at Glen Island Beach for the next today and tomorrow to deal with some of this heat, and then we'll certainly make decisions as we go forward uh, in the days to come. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month. Ken is going to cover some of those details, an event that we have coming up, and then we're going to honor somebody who's been very active and involved in our mental health uh, team who's done a terrific job. Ken. Thanks, George. And September is Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month. And remember, we have our 988 hotline across the thing. So on Heal we're going to have an event on September 8th at the Healing Garden. So all month long, our mental health advocates, prevention organizations, survivors, allies, and community members unite to promote su suicide prevention awareness. According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, Suicide is the leading cause of death in people aged 10 to 34 years old. Westchester County and its partnering agencies are encouraging individuals with mental health illnesses to seek help before it's too late. This Friday, in honor of Suicide Prevention and Awareness Month, we will gather at the Healing Garden at Ridge Road Park to unveil a butterfly display. This butterfly display is intended to represent the butterfly effect and the notion that by making small changes in behavior, those who may be contemplating suicide can make a different choice, resulting in a better, healthier outcome. We want to remind people that we have the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, which is available for anyone who is suicidal, experiencing a mental health or substance use related crisis, or experiencing any kind of emotional distress. This service is free and confidential and provides support 24 seven. Trained counselors will listen and connect individuals with resources if needed. The, the reality again is that those particular support services for 988 um, Suicide and Crisis Lifeline are also available for those family members and friends that are trying to help support those who may be having challenges accessing those mental health awareness services. So at this point in time, I will turn it back over to County Executive Latimer. Well, we, we, as I said earlier on, we want to spotlight those individuals who work for county government. We have over 4,000 employees spread out through lots of different disciplines, and uh, uh, quite a large number of them are unsung heroes. Some of them uh, are dealing in, in uh, projects and efforts that meet and interact with the public directly, and some are not. And in some of the departments, uh, people aren't even sure what it is that a particular department does, environmental facilities, uh, uh, some of the other things that we have that are internal. But today, we're going to start the process by recognizing uh, one of our important people in our Department of Community Mental Health. I'm joined by Michael Orth, who's the commissioner of that department, and I'm joined by Annette Peters-Ravolo, uh, Ravolo, pardon me, 
uh, who is a licensed certified social worker, program director of community support services for DCMH. And Annette, you can blush if you want, but we have a long explanation of uh, some of the wonderful things you've done. She joined the county government in this particular position in August of 2009. And in this role as program director, she's provided leadership for our Westchester County suicide prevention and awareness efforts. This includes serving as an important member of Westchester's suicide fatality review team. Westchester was selected as one of three counties in New York State awarded a grant by the Suicide Prevention Center of New York under the New York State Office of Mental Health to develop, test, and refine a formal in-depth suicide review process. The purpose of the grant, learning from loss using suicide fatality reviews for effective prevention activities is twofold. First, it ensures accurate and complete data collection by medical examiner offices investigations of suicide deaths. And second, to conduct in-depth community reviews of suicide deaths looking for systemic patterns. Due to the successful implementation of the model, Westchester was selected for keynote speakers and uh, presenters at the most recent meeting that uh, brought everyone together, Sam, I can't pronounce it, S-A-M-H-S-A, -S -A, SAMHSA, National Suicide Fatality Review Team Conference, which was held July 2023 here in White Plains. Annette has led the effort also for a Veterans Suicide Prevention Subcommittee, and uh, she's shown exemplary leadership, and she's shown a real passion in her role as program director, not just to do the job at the minimum level required, but to do it with a sense of time and energy and effort that goes well beyond the, the uh, specifics. Her husband is here. He can attest to the number of times that Annette was hard at work mm -hmm. instead of uh, being home uh, with him. And we appreciate his sacrifice in this area. I'd like uh, Michael Arthur, Commissioner, to talk a little bit about Annette's role. And then Annette, if you're comfortable, I'd like you to say a few words as well. Commissioner Michael Arthur. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, I want to thank County Executive Latimer and Deputy County Executive Jenkins for recognizing Suicide uh, Prevention Month and uh, the important work that we do in department would not be possible without Annette. Uh, as the county executive said, she's a true leader, she's a visionary, um, she has a, a way of strategic planning that gets us from point A to point B. And as the county executive mentioned, uh, White Plains was actually the host of the first ever national suicide fatality review conference. And what I was told by SAMHSA officials, it was between Los Angeles, California, in Westchester County, White Plains, and guess who won out? And it was really because Annette's work on our Suicide Fatality Review Committee, um, gathering data, using data to inform decision making to really address suicide prevention. Uh, Annette is a stellar professional within the department and has this ability to bring people together from all different departments and organizations for one general shared purpose. So on behalf of Department of Community Mental Health, we have Deputy Commissioner Joe Glazer and Bill Weitz with us. Thank you, Annette, for all you do and your leadership. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you, County Executive Latimer, Deputy Jenkins, Commissioner Orth, and Deputy Commissioner Glazer for this recognition. I really appreciate it, and I'm a little overwhelmed because I didn't know you were going to say so much. Um, I've been with the county for over 14 years, and some of my most fulfilling work has been collaborating with my talented colleagues at the Department of Community Mental Health, other county departments, and our many community partners who are dedicated to our efforts in the area of suicide prevention, thinking of and implementing creative and effective ways to bring this important topic to light and provide care to those who have been touched by suicide. I'm very honored to be one of them and to be able to represent my department in this way. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Annette. And uh, thank you, Michael, for being with us here, and also the other members of DCMH for uh, recognizing Annette's role and her accomplishments. And uh, as I said, this is uh, the first, but by no means the last time that we're going to uh, invite some of the people who work for this county government to uh, talk a little bit about what they do and the people that uh, are responsible for them, commissioners of departments, to come as well. We're very, we're very fortunate to have professionals in every area, every endeavor in this county. And we could not function as a county government without that level of professionalism, career-long commitments to the areas that they're involved in. One of the difficult parts, I think, for most of us as, as residents is we don't interact with the county government in all of its iterations. We may see the wonderful park system that we have, but we may not know exactly what happens uh, you know, inside the county jail and the Department of Corrections. We may not know what happens in some of the internal departments where we have people in, in information technology that are trying their best to uh, stay up to speed with the changes 
in um, uh, technology that would help keep us protected and safe from all sorts of cyber crime. And, and we want to make sure that you understand that there are those kinds of people who made a lifelong commitment. It's not a commitment to a county executive or an administration. It's a professional commitment to the work that they do, which carries on no matter who's sitting in these positions of authority here uh, on the ninth floor. And so, Annette, we're happy that you're the first of many to be uh, recognized. And uh, we hope that this is a sign both for our residents as well as for the other workers in this county government that it is not just when you fail that you're pointed out, when you succeed, you're identified and pointed out in a positive light. It's very important, I think, for the, for the good of the whole organization. So thank you again for being with us today. Congratulations. Uh, we're joined as well now by a good friend who's been at this podium before. Uh, she's been here previously in her capacity as a town supervisor for the town of Ossining. As you know, when we have these uh, uh, updates, weekly updates. We invite supervisors, mayors of villages and cities to come and uh, give us an update on the community. So the last time she was here, she had on a hat that said Town of Ossining Supervisor. But in last November's election, she was elevated to a seat in the New York State Assembly. And she's done an exemplary job in a very short period of time. Uh, and we're very happy to have her back in a new capacity as New York State Assemblywoman Dana Levenberg, resident of Austin. Madam you. Assemblywoman, thank, thank you, you for so coming much, back. County Executive Latimer. Uh, I'm I'm humbled again to be here, and especially uh, as we're recognizing Suicide Prevention Month. And Annette and Michael, thank you so much for all of your hard work and all the nice words that were said about you. I, I, I'm sure um, that we all benefit, and I know that all of us have actually been touched by by suicide. Um, I have. Um, I'm proud to have been uh, elected in, last November to the New York State Assembly to represent the 95th Assembly District, and hopefully uh, have hit the ground running. I think. I have since January 2023. My district includes the towns of Cortland and Ossining and their respective villages, uh, the city of Peekskill and portions of Yorktown here in Westchester County. I also have the town of Phillipstown and its villages up in Putnam County. Uh, the 95th Assembly District is a diverse district and there are lots of opportunities and challenges that uh, we all face here as well as across the state of New York. Uh, my staff and I have been very busy speaking with constituents and helping them with various problems that they may have with state agencies and others. Uh, we are meeting with stakeholders and working on legislation to support everyone here in the Lower Hudson Valley. My mission as a legislator has been and continues to be to build healthy communities in every sense of the word, economically healthy, environmentally healthy, physically and mentally healthy, all through the lens of equity. The legislation I've sponsored this year is very much in line with this mission. In total, I was prime co or multi-sponsor of 71 bills that passed both houses of the legislature this session. Eight of my prime sponsored bills passed both houses, and that's more than any other first member of the assembly I'm proud to announce. Three of these bills have been signed into law so far this year, and they range from narrowly tailored legislation aimed at addressing municipal priorities to big bills like Save the Hudson, our effort that has gotten so much press. The passage of a7208, or our Save the Hudson bill, bans the discharge of nuclear wastewater from decommissioning nuclear power plants into the Hudson River, and it was an immense collaborative effort. Nearly 450,000 petitioners, 35 municipalities, five county executives, including our own, thank you, George, over 100 grassroots advocacy groups, plus the entire Hudson Valley congressional delegation supported this effort. I am so grateful to my colleagues in the assembly and the Senate and the counties, especially the Senate sponsor, Pete Harcum. This really goes to show how much Everyone in this region loves the Hudson River and its surrounding communities. We cannot have economically healthy communities in the Hudson without a healthy Hudson River. So we must be vigilant about how we treat it. And we must continue to work together in the coming years to ensure a safe and successful decommissioning of Indian Point. 
And that includes ensuring that the Indian Point workforce is not subject to retaliatory treatment in response to this legislation. And we will continue to work very hard on that. We believe and have been told it is not part of the critical path to decommissioning. And we certainly believe that to be true based on the information we've received. As you know, I am a full-time representative, so when we're not in session in Albany, like now, I am all around the district working to support our various constituencies. I have been quite busy visiting all of the communities in my district, from public events to meetings. I've taken it uh, as part of district-wide listening tour. I even visited um, some of the farms in the district most recently, and I do have some more to go. Another focus of mine is on infrastructure, particularly on our state roads. There is a study underway of Route 9A, the road I receive the most complaints about. We are glad that a repaving of part of that road is scheduled to begin next year as part of the capital projects funded by federal dollars as directed by the New York Metropolitan Transportation Council. And again, shout out to our county exec for your advocacy. Uh, of course, more work still needs to be done. We are looking ahead for potential funding sources to address the eventual recommendations that we will be made in the study's final report, such as federal infrastructure money. I will be sure to keep pestering the chair of NIMTIC, uh, wink, wink, about making sure our road projects get on the TIP or the Transportation Improvement Plan. My office is also very involved in connecting communities and organizations in my district with grant funding. So far, we have awarded $250,000 to various organizations in the district this year with funds benefiting five libraries, two of our local governments, one of our school districts, and two not-for-profits, CHOP and Support Connection. We are currently fielding applications for an additional $1.5 million in funding to support capital projects around the district. My, off my office also puts out a monthly grants uh, e-blast to help our local municipalities, school districts, and not-for-profits access opportunities. Please feel free to email me at levenbergd at nyassembly.gov if you would like to be included on that very helpful list. I couldn't do all of this without my small but mighty team of three full-time staffers, Victoria Caffarelli, Acacia Moriello, and Rebecca Southard Krieger, and as well as our fabulous interns. They work very hard, they learn a lot, and they have a great time. If you know of any students who are looking for an internship opportunity in this field, please feel free to send them my way. The link to apply is on my assembly webpage. I'd love to replicate the robust internship program that my predecessor, Assemblywoman Sandy Galef, had. My team and I have just moved into New Digs, a new district office space at 8 Revolutionary Road in Osning. Please feel free to visit us. We'll be hosting an open house on Friday, September 22nd. I hope you guys are writing this down from 1 to 5 p.m. to officially cut the ribbon on the new space that's a great time to drop by, so I hope that, uh, that many of you will be joining us that, that day. That's all for now. If you're interested in hearing more from me, please feel free to check out my webpage on nyassembly.gov or follow me on social media. I'm at A.M. Dana Levenberg on all the major platforms. Or if you need help from my district office staff, they can be reached at 914 941 one 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 one. Thank you again so much, County Executive Deputy County Executive, for your friendship, your cooperation, and your partnership uh, at all levels for everything. I really appreciate it so much. Thank Thanks. You so much, okay. Thank you. Thank you again, Assemblywoman Dana Levenberg, from Ossining, uh, Cortland, Croton, Peekskill, and uh, Phillipstown, and all of the other villages in between Buchanan and so forth. Uh, it is a pleasure to work with you and the other members of the Assembly delegation. Uh, lots of issues ahead, and so we look forward to uh, cooperative efforts as we go forward. A couple of other issues to talk about before we uh, uh, close out our program today. Since we are in the back-to-school mode now, a number of school districts started classes today. The rest, I believe, start tomorrow. Uh, the Westchester County Department of Health is reminding families that you need to book back-to-school vaccination visits with your child's health care provider 
or at the free back-to-school clinics that are provided by the county health department. Children have to catch up with vaccines that are recommended for their age and grade, and there are mandatory vaccinations. We're not talking COVID now. We're talking about the traditional childhood diseases that have long been eradicated or reduced because of vaccination, and children must have those vaccinations in place in order to attend school. Uh, your health care provider will know the specifics behind it. 11th, 7th and 12th graders have to get meningococcal, pardon me, mening, help me out here, meningococcal vaccine. Learn something every day. And all students must be vaccinated against whooping cough, measles, and mumps. And uh, with, uh, with those who are without insurance, with insurance or who have Child Health Plus or Medicaid, the county health department can help. If you have no insurance, any of those other programs, call the County Health Department to schedule an appointment for vaccination, 995-5800. And if you qualify, then you'll be able to get those for free. I will call that number, make sure I learn how to pronounce that word so I don't mispronounce it in the future. Now we'll go to our um, uh, update of the various parks. Our parks were uh, just a wonderful uh, treat for all of us during the summertime, but now there are full programs, uh, including the return of Bicycle Sunday. Ken will cover all of those right now. <laughs> Thanks, Joyce. And, and certainly it is Bicycle Sundays returning this Sunday, September 10th. So I'll head back out to the Bronx River Parkway with us for more Bicycle Sundays right through the end of September, September 10th. And it's going to run through October 1st for the rest of the season. The time starts at, at 10 and it goes right till 2 p.m. And it starts from Scarsdale Road in Yonkers, goes right up to the county center. And we certainly have our great partners with the Parks Foundation and that new cycle partner, which is Jen, who's also at the, on the border of Yonkers in Yonkers. Um, Jen Cycles is the, uh, the new partner that the, uh, the Parks Foundation has worked with, again, from 10 to 2 p.m. on the outstanding um, reservation of the Bronx River Reservation on the Bronx River Parkway, whether you skate rollerblade um, walk and enjoy yourself at the Bronx River Parkway. Um, again, it's going to be from 10 to 2 p.m. and it's a special extended summertime. I know it's not going to be as hot as it is right now, so you still have to hydrate and to drink all those fluids that you would have to do. Um, during Bicycle Sundays, it, by, uh, Bronx River Parkway is closed just for the exclusive use of our bicyclists, joggers, walkers, scooters, and strollers. So it's 13.1 miles for those that are keeping count, and there is many points of entry along the way. So again, shout out to the County Parks and sponsored by our sponsors, Parks Foundation and New York Presbyterian Westchester. Con Ed and Jen Cycles are our key sponsors in that. Shout out to all of them for that level of support. Um, we are going to have this week, in addition to our healing guarding um, during the day, September 8th at 8 p.m., we're going to have Impact Wrestling Live at Victory Road at the County Center um, for those folks that are interested in, in that kind of uh, wrestling activity. So again, Victory Road Wrestling Live, Impact Wrestling, that's going to be at the County Center. And you can purchase those tickets at Ticketmaster.com or right at the County Center box office. All of the Impact stores that you love will be in New York for these two shows, including the world champion Steve Macklin, um, Frankie Kazarin, Tommy the Dreamer, Bully Ray, Nick Aldis, Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards, Chris Sabin, Alex Shelley, Moose, PCO, Trey Miguel, Deanna Perrazzo, and Giselle Shaw, among others. Obviously, that gets subject to change as they move around and sometimes uh, injuries do occur. Um, but again, the world champions are going to be here on Friday, September 8th at 8 p.m. at the County Center. On Sunday, September 10th and right through um, every Sunday until November 19th, we're going to have our farmers markets back in effect first at the farmers market at Muscoot Farm in Somers, um, our Al Del Bello Park as well. The weekly market supports the local farmers and sustainable efforts in our area featuring more than 20 local vendors every week and it's certainly something to take advantage of. And in some really exciting news, the Parks E-Club Weekly Newsletter has just been recently updated for those that haven't taken a peek at it in a while. So be sure to go on our Parks website, parks.westchestergov.com, for the, sign up for the weekly Parks Newsletter, and then join the Parks E-Club today. Get up-to-the-minute program and event information, including the last two that we just mentioned, plus updates on promotions, valuable discounts, 
that are going to deli be delivered right to your mailbox. It really looks exciting. It's been a good refresh on that. So again, the Parks Weekly newsletter that's coming up. Back to you, George. And again, we want to thank uh, all of those in our Parks, Recreation, and Conservation Department for their work over the summer. Not just the pools and the beaches that were open, but all of the different activities of the parks usually went a lot, lot deeper into the evening. Very busy on the weekends. We had park rangers and our Department of um, uh, Public Safety that were there to help us manage that process. We're not finished with all of these efforts because the fall weekends are very busy weekends as well. But we really appreciate their professionalism in helping us accomplish all these things. And as Ken's pointed out, a number of these issues continue on. Um, let me mention that the uh, ongoing issue of uh, migrant asylum seekers continues uh, in the United States. It is a national issue, a federal issue. I addressed this last week in some great detail. Just to let you know, this week there has been uh, a slight reduction in the number of migrants that are housed in Westchester County. We had a little over 400 as of last week. There's always some movement of families within the number of placements that we have. Uh, the most recent count is now 371 migrants that are housed here. Uh, we have the largest portion of them at the Yonkers location with 140 adults, 77 children. In Ardsley, there are 80 individuals, 18 children out of 80. And in White Plains, there's 22 children out of 74 total individuals. Uh, it's 27 rooms in White Plains, 35 rooms in Ardsley, and 76 rooms in Yonkers. All of these numbers uh, have been uh, uh, identified on an ongoing basis. We try to track where we stand with the various organizations, uh, West Hab in Yonkers and DocGo in Ardsley and White Plains. No instance of crime at any of these locations, no incidents in the spread of diseases at any of these locations. Uh, we have had uh, uh, solid management. We thank the cities of Yonkers, White Plains, and the village of Ardsley for their role and the county's role as well in ensuring that public safety uh, throughout the course of this period of time. And as I hasten to uh, mention, every time it comes up because people need to make the reference, right now we're dealing with slightly under 400 individuals here, 371 by recent count. Five years ago in the Trump administration, we had 1,000 migrant children in Westchester County. So we are not yet at the 50% at the mark of what we had at that point in time. We manage that process effectively. We're doing everything we can to manage this process effectively. And we'll continue to update you. Obviously, if there's any information to share sooner, we'll let you know that. All other reports of other placements in the county are inaccurate. Uh, there may be individual asylum seekers residing in Westchester, but they're not coming as part of a group placement through New York City, which is the only placements that we are made aware of in any formal structure. Uh, let me also mention before we close out that we've got uh, coming up next Monday, uh, in lieu of when we normally have our update on Mondays, today, Tuesday, following a uh, major national holiday. Next Monday is the uh, annual ceremonies that uh, memorialize the 9-11 tragedies in the year 2001. The county will have their program as we normally do at Kensico Dam Plaza. That'll be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and all of the municipalities will also have a variety of services. Some of them occur in the morning. Yonkers, White Plains, Eastchester have morning services. Some are in the middle of the day. Pound Ridge, Cortland have midday actions. And then most of the rest of them from 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 7 o'clock will have those localized in their community commemorations. We pick 3 o'clock for the county commemoration so as not to conflict with those different local uh, recollections because people will feel connected to the people in the community that they live in who they lost on that day. And I would remind you that we established a year ago a 9-11 memorial wall that complements the rising, which recognizes the 103 Westchester residents that we lost that day. The wall commemorates those who died from 9-11 related illnesses, people who worked on the pile uh, in those days after the 9-11 attacks and who su subsequently suffered from serious disease and died prematurely. And unfortunately, we will be adding more names to that wall this year. We have lost some additional brave men uh, uh, who have uh, made a, a sacrifice every bit as significant as the sacrifice that's made on behalf of America by our veterans and by those in law enforcement. So these first responders will be eternally remembered here in Westchester County. That will be part of our ceremony for 9-11 on that date. A little later in the month, we will also have a Gold Star Mothers uh, commemoration for those women who lost uh, a child, um, a daughter or son, uh, in the military service, and uh, that is, a, uh, is an unfortunate organization uh, to become a member of. But once you are, there's uh, sisterly and brotherly support for those people and recognition 
for the sacrifice made not only by the individual, but by the family of that individual. That comes a little later in the month of September. 9-11 commemoration is coming up right ahead of us um, uh, next Monday. Um, I also want to highlight that a lot of issues that come up that you see uh, uh, broadcast are issues that um, you know create controversy, and we have our share in Westchester County. But I noticed over the weekend a, a controversial issue came up in, in Nassau County between the use of the name and, in some cases, the likeness of the county executive on uh, promotional signage and information about events, newspaper article and conflict. And I wanted to remind people here in Westchester County that five years ago, uh, I issued an executive order that banned the use of the name of the county executive from any uh, public uh, setting for promotional purposes, and that was backed up by legislation that was passed by the B Westchester County Board of Legislators uh, in the summer, uh, late spring and early summer of 2018. So for five years, Westchester County has locked into law making sure that no elected county executive, not myself or any of my successors, can use the position to promote their name across the board. It is a controversy in Nassau. It is not a controversy in Westchester County. News will not report to you things that haven't happened. They report to you the things that have happened, which would lead you to think that the only news is bad news, because that's what gets reported. Sometimes there's actually good news, things that uh, we have been ahead of the game on. We were ahead of the game in Westchester County on passing a truthful disclosure law for candidates, for county legislator and county executive to try to factor out the George Santoses of the world and make sure that they submit a, a resume under threat of civil penalty that is accurate, that law is now in effect, that applies to those candidates who have run. My understanding is that all the candidates have complied here in Westchester County, those who are on the ballot in November. So um, we're doing some things right along with all the other things that we do. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Ken Jenkins, our Deputy County Executive, uh, for his uh, leadership and partnership in all of these efforts. Joan McDonald, Emily Saltzman, leaders in our operations team, Catherine Chaffee and her communications team who do tremendous work and everyone else in this government. Uh, and again, uh, I want to thank you for watching. We'll be back next week. We'll give you more information uh, as it becomes available. Thank you so much. Have a safe week.